What up everyone, it's Ketan Singh here and I'm back with a brand new video. So I wasn't really planning on making a video about this, but I actually don't have my camera here, so I'm just going to do an audio video for this and I'm going to talk about the biggest problem I have with Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Now, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is the new um, attraction at Disneyland Resort and whatnot where they have their own Star Wars land. As many people have heard, it's been opening up this week and there's a huge Millennium Falcon there, there's a bunch of things to do and I have a real problem with this because there's so many little bitty issues that just culminate into something that I really can't get out of my head and that's just the fact that this Star Wars land is so muddled up. Now I was obviously haven't gone yet, I don't have the money to go, I just see this problem everywhere. So basically this story that takes place at Galaxy's Edge is canon, okay? So it takes place in between episode 8 and episode 9 and we don't know what happens in episode 9 yet so there's still, there's still leeway for changes to be made and things to exp be explained. But the problem I have, since it's all canon, this means that the Millennium Falcon has to be owned by Honda during the events of between episode 8 and 9. This also means that maybe Batu will play a role in some sort of way between episode 8 and 9. But then the big question I get is how the hell are lightsabers, holocrons and everything related to the Jedi being sold and created on Batu. Now, Batu isn't a well-known planet amongst like the whole galaxy. It's like on the edge of the unknown region or wild space. I can't remember exactly which one, but it's in the outer rim. It's far off. I've read Thrawn Alliances, so I know that it's not a great place at all. And clearly it hasn't undergone many changes because while watching the Star Wars video from the Star Wars show where they went through the park, they showed that some of the blaster bolts and stuff from when Thrawn and Vader slash Anakin were there still remain. So clearly they haven't gone through any industrial changes to change up the place since the events that happened in between the prequel trilogy and original trilogy. So it just doesn't really make much sense why this place would have changed so much in that sense. Since this place is considered canon, it takes place in the sequel trilogy, why are there lightsabers being built there? Why are there holocrons? Why is this rather dinky kind of backwards planet so filled with life and so full of trade and so prominent for some reason it doesn't really make much sense right now and seeing how this does play, take place between episode 8 and 9 it takes place during the sequel trilogy and one thing that Star Disney sorry came out and said was that they don't want us to be enthrusted into someone else's story which is why there's no Luke or Vader or any of those original characters or even prequel characters roaming about the park. But the weird thing is Kylo Ren is there, Rey is there, I saw a picture of a lady talking to Rey, and it doesn't really make much sense because now we're being enthrusted into the sequel trilogy stories. So you're trying to make up an excuse to defend yourself from not putting in the original trilogy or prequel trilogy just so you can find any reason to justify why you would only promote the sequel trilogy. And you putting this into canon even more just breaks it a lot. So I think if this land, if Star Wars land wasn't a part of canon, it'd be so much better because then you could do everything you wanted and you wouldn't break anything because now it's canon. If Rey and Kylo Ren are there, it doesn't really make much sense. The things, sure, I can be like, oh, okay, no, this isn't canon, this isn't canon. Then you're just going to be juggling between what is canon and what isn't canon. So either make up your mind and make it all canon or don't make it canon at all. Going on to one other thing that really adds to this problem is the fact that they're not really knowing how to promote Star Wars as a whole. For some reason, Disney Lucasfilm seems to just be focusing on the sequel trilogy. Sure, they made the sequel trilogy, and sure, a lot of the kids nowadays are growing up watching the sequel trilogy, but that doesn't mean you forget about the other trilogies and you forget about the other eras in Star Wars. So what I would personally do if I was Disney Lucasfilm I would make a Star Wars then have seasonal events. So for a few months or however long you want, you have it set in the time of the sequel trilogy. Then you change it to the original trilogy, prequel trilogy, so on and so forth. When you add in the Old Republic, you can do a change things around to make it look like it's in the Old Republic. And these are simple things such as changing the lightsaber desi designs that you can get, um, changing the gear you can get from First Order to the Empire, to the Separatists, to whoever is in the Old Republic, just the Sith, I guess. And then you can do the same with the Jedi, with the Rebellion, with the Resistance. 
you can change the look of the Millennium Falcon to make it look like it was during the events of the original trilogy, which is for the most part just changing a few things here and there on the outside. But it's subtle things like this, which can make the whole park experience brand new. It can also allow for a more inclusive environment for all of the trilogies, making it more of a Star Wars land rather than a sequel trilogy land. The biggest problem with this park itself is that it is canon and there's a lot of breaking, rule breaking things in here with the lightsabers, with the hustle and bustle of this unknown um, planet which is on the galaxy's edge, which really doesn't make sense. It's not, not, doesn't really make much sense in many aspects, I believe. But who knows, maybe there's a book or something out there which is going to explain this, or maybe it already explains that somewhat. As far as I'm aware, I don't think there's enough proof out there that can explain all these issues that are surrounding it with regards to the canon and the idea that it has to be set during the sequel trilogy. I think it's all on Disney and Lucasfilm to figure it out for themselves and obviously I think what I have suggested is the best solution to it. Share with me your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let me know if you're excited to go to Galaxy's Edge and I'll catch y'all next time. See us.